Today we're going to do a notebook review. This is the second on a series of reviews featuring Filipino brand notebooks. This is divided into four parts, so be sure to check the description for timestamps. Katha Journals is the first local brand notebook I became aware of. They started back in December 2019 with their first release, black and gray notebooks with 160 GSM bleed-free pages. According to them, their notebooks are coded just right to let your pen glide smoothly, and that they are good even for watercolor paintings. Katha means handwriting, the act of writing, something written, literary work, or a story. So it's a very appropriate name for a notebook brand. This is actually what drew me to them. After their black and gray notebooks, they also released Luna and Flora. Luna comes in a black hardcover with a silver moon stamped on the front. Flora, on the other hand, has a green hardcover with silver flowers stamped on the front cover. The brand's been inactive in social media in the past few months, but I still got this Flora notebook from their Shopee. This is the only notebook available right now from their store. We don't have an unboxing video for this notebook because I was a little disappointed when I got the package and I already threw everything away. But here are some pictures. The box was a little too big for the notebook and no other protection was given. So we know that this notebook is strong and can withstand JNT shipping. But we got a lovely coat. It says, In the journal, I do not just express myself more openly than I could to any person. I create myself. The cover is made of what I think is synthetic leather. I couldn't find what material this really is, but it's hardcover. Aside from the silver flowers on the front, the brand logo is stamped on the back cover. We have this elastic closure and a pen loop, both in green. The pen loop's a little different than usual. It's the same thickness as the elastic closure. It was easy to slip in my go-to Pilot Friction in two colors, which is good even though I don't really use this feature. Opening the notebook, we are greeted by a nice blank page. It doesn't have a space for your name and goes directly into the dotted pages after. There is a back pocket, which is a little bit shorter than usual, but it looks sturdy and is made of paper and a ribbon-like material on the sides. I already started using this notebook, I'll tell you why later. But the paper is really smooth, you kinda just wanna run your hands over it again and again. It's supposed to be ivory white, I think it's a cool white though. Ivory white's on the warmer side, right? My current bullet journal has ivory white pages and they're quite different. But let me know in the comments if this is like a shade of ivory white to you. Anyway, the dots are spaced 5mm apart. They are larger and in a dark shade of grey. I prefer lighter and smaller dots, but if you like larger and darker dots, this one's for you. The pages aren't numbered and each page has 26 by 39 squares. The notebook lays flat when opened and the binding's quite good, though some of the pages are kinda dirty. Some are just spots, but this page has a good amount. I don't know what this is. It turned me off because I like nice, neat things, and this looks nothing like that. But moving on, it only has one page marker, which is quite sad since this one's the most expensive among the four notebooks. Although the price difference is small, I still want to get the most from the most expensive one. I'm that cheap. 
I'll just quickly go over the pens I used for the pen test. A Tombow ABT, Pentel Food to Touch, a Steidler brush pen, a Sharpie pen, a Zebra brush pen medium, a Karin brush marker pro, a Tombow for the Noski, Uniposka, a Copic sketch marker, a Zebra mild liner, a Sakura Pigma graphic, a Copic multi liner, STA metallic brush pen, Uniball Signo DX, a Pilot Petite, and I did the pen test before I got my Pilot Fude Makase, so I just added it. I letter the logo on one page like I did for the other notebooks to kind of experience using the notebook a bit more. I'll use mainly black pens, my Sakura Pigma Microns, and a black brush pen to fill in the middle parts. The paper continues to feel smooth and I didn't purposely smear ink but there's no smearing and smudging on my work. I'd say it did good here. For the paint test, I'll do a swatch of watercolor with less water, a good amount of water, and a lot of water. I'm not really good with this medium, but I'll try my best to get the right mix of things here. First, we have the swatch with a little water. The brush glides smoothly on the paper and no feathering, so it looks like it's doing well. For the second swatch, I find it difficult to decide whether there's enough water but this is supposed to be the one with a good amount of water on it. The last one is my favorite because that's actually how I use this watercolor palette, with a lot of water. I feel like people tend to use gouache for less watery goals. But yeah, I let everything dry for a few hours and now we'll know how it looks after. The backs of the pen swatches are between them, so now it's time for the big reveal. Okay, so we can immediately see three pens bled through the paper. This Tidler brush pen and the Karen brush marker plus the always bleeding through alcohol marker Copic Sketch. Those pens are really watery so I don't think this paper can be good for layering colors and blending them. I have a heavy hand too so I tend to really push on the paper when writing and I can see that's gonna be a problem here. However, on the other side, there is ghosting but no bleeding. I layered the black for the logo at least three times after letting each layer dry first. So if you're using this notebook, maybe you can do that to avoid marks on the other side. Here on the paint test, I don't think I added enough water on the last two swatches but I promise I added water. But. This paper is supposed to be a little coated, so yep, no bleeding and only a little buckling. This is actually nice, almost no warping here, the paper is nice and flat, but I'm a little puzzled because the brush markers bled through the pages. I guess it really depends on the pressure, how quick the ink will seep through the paper. So, I think it's really okay to use watercolor here. I was very excited to get this notebook. I almost bought it as my 2021 bullet journal back in December, but I didn't because it was a little above how much I wanted to spend. At that time, I've never spent over 500 pesos on a notebook. Times have changed. 
This is 850 pesos and I'm really sorry but I'm not the biggest fan. The packaging wasn't secure. I don't mind not having decorative aspects on the packaging but I just want it secure. Also, aside from not doing so well on the pen test, some of the pages were stained. And because of the state of the notebook and the packaging, I just can't feel the passion and love behind this and that makes me sad. Cause I know there has to be a lot of struggle to come up with something like this. So yeah, honestly, the moment I opened the notebook, I already knew this isn't gonna be my next bullet journal. But I'm still gonna use it to compile bullet journal ideas, notes, and systems that I wanna try. Overall, the best thing about this notebook is it did well with watercolor. So if you like using that medium in your notebook, you may want to still try this. And maybe I got a dot or something, cause I see a lot of good reviews about this notebook. If you're using Katha Journal right now or have used it in the past, let us know in the comments. How's your experience? But I guess that's it. Thanks for making it this far in the video. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one.